Hi everybody, it's August 20, 2019. I want to start this weather video with telling you that, yes, I have a playlist on Never Lose Truth, my primary channel. It contains 269 videos on how man is controlling the weather. The videos that I'm showing you that I have posted evidence, documents, proof that man can control heat waves, induce heat waves. This video, which I'll link to everything below. Yes, heat waves induced by man. The many methods that they have, black carbon dust, weather modification by artificial satellite, microwaves, oh, those heat waves that mainstream media is talking about? Mm, let's see. This guy? Ah, heat waves, record highs today. <gasps> oh my God. Well, it's not unusual. It's summertime. But look at the area of heat waves kind of consuming the entire country. That can be brought about by man. Mother Nature has been put into retirement and artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, is operating. Here is retired Lieutenant Colonel Tom Bearden talking about how they're using scalar technology to control the weather. How about that nanotechnology and artificial intelligence? Discussed here in Operational Defenses Through Weather Control in 2030, United States Air Force or how about artificial clouds the many ways they can create artificial clouds yes here is the playlist so for anyone who happens upon this video and you're still believing that it's climate change and global weather that's bringing about such destructive weather that we are seeing on a daily basis if you don't do the research, now knowing that so many people are talking about man is controlling the weather, you are complicit with the next American, your next fellow American who gets destroyed by weather. What they have to deal with, whether it's a tree falling on a home, whether it is their home flooded out, whether it's that damaging wind or damaging hail, all of these radical changes in our weather, please understand, radical changes do not come about naturally. They come about when they are orchestrated, deliberately induced by man. And yeah, you might want to check out, <sighs> do some research on climate change, global warming, this mainstream media hysteria that we hear coming out of our journalists, our reporters, oh, out of those famous actors and actresses out of Hollywood, uh, our government officials, Al Gore, um, IPCC, United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, you might want to do some research to find out. No, there ain't no consensus of scientists. Thousands upon thousands of scientists have come out and spoken Hey, uh, CO2, we need more of it. It's good. It's good for plants love it, trees love it. Oh, and we feel better when there's more of it. Ah, oh, man, how could they be lying so, like flipping things around? Well, that's what we're living. Nobel laureate that you're looking at right now, he talks about, well, Climate science, climatologists today are a joke. The IPCC is a joke. It's a fraud. Yeah, we've got a massive deception going, deceiving the world's people. Why? Why is it going on? Because there's too many willfully ignorant people who refuse to do the research to find out that they're being lied to. So, 
Here's radar right now. Massive, extremely low frequencies belting from Nebraska coming into Kansas. And yeah, there were storms. But when you see now our weather, it doesn't seem to come in from anywhere. Well, what we have now are these little uh, blips that erupt out of nowhere. I call them precipitation soldiers because weather is being used as a weapon. What's going on here? This is nanotechnology. You can find out what's going on, well, if you watch this video. Nanotechnology controlling weather just needs military officer's command. Do this keystroke, please. Yeah, supercomputers. We're living a whole new era, a whole new time where man is using weather as a weapon. So, uh, people have been asking why I'm not posting on weather. It's not deliberate. Just too much going on. I kind of lost focus. I lost uh, traction. But um, since I haven't been posting on it, yeah. More and more people have been flooded out. More homes got trees falling down upon those trees. More cars squished. More damaging hail, damaging winds. Uh, it just continues. Why does it continue? Because willful ignorance is ruling the majority of our, our citizens in our respective countries. Look at these frequencies here. Houston area. Extremely low frequencies. Uh, what, what I've, I've taken a lot of radar captures and what we have been seeing now is a whole new use of electromagnetic frequencies. Wholly new than it was even just a couple of months ago. This year, what we have been seeing on radar, we didn't see last year. Last year, we didn't see two years ago. Everything is getting worse. Extremely low frequency here in Nevada, uh, coming out of Nebraska, Houston. The different colors are different frequencies. What's the effect of all of this? Well, they can control and manipulate and steer weather fronts. They can use frequencies like this, these extremely low frequencies, to literally control the population within a region. They can have these frequencies lock on to the frequencies in individuals' brains and subtly manipulate those electromagnetic firings in your brain to change your opinion, your view, your behavior. They can cause a whole lot of physical problems for you. Fatigue, tinnitus, vertigo, dizziness, headaches. They can change how you feel emotionally, create irritability, anger, rage, depression. And they can keep you at a low level of consciousness. With the use of these frequencies now, we have to be very careful about our own self, which means we've got to have the awareness of our own self. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychically, mentally, cognitively. Because if we don't have an awareness of our own self, wow, are you very vulnerable. You are easy prey to get changed. And the changes come about so subtly you wouldn't even know it. So, uh, yeah. 65 earthquakes. Kansas, Oklahoma. Last seven days. This isn't normal? Yeah, it's not normal. What's going on here? Well, what is this? 
this was the 14th, 14th, six days ago, and Oklahoma and Kansas. Extremely low frequencies, being shot off, different, different frequencies, different power levels right here coming up. Okay. Uh, what I have been seeing on radar, I'm not entirely sure what is going on, but the pulsing is different. They've, they've changed the power levels of these frequencies. And it's very dangerous for all life, all life. This is the 14th again. The, the video that you just saw was at 3.30 p.m. This is now, oh, about 8.30 p.m. Look at the lining up of our nanotechnology weather right along the south with the frequencies. But well, let's check out Kansas and Oklahoma. Still have extremely low frequencies, but not so bad. Uh, how about at 10.30, all the time is Eastern Standard Time. Look at these powerful Doppler radar Wow, never seen it as it is just raging now, but pulsing differently. Look at that. They're pulsing differently. The pulses are far more powerful. I believe the blue is plasma. And this is Oklahoma. Not so bad. But look at these. We've not seen radar like this. It's like, it's almost, you know, it, it pulses and then the plasma disappears and then whoop, comes right back up. And this is the 15th, 9.17 a.m. Oklahoma. What is going on here? It's like a plasma wave that they're creating right across. But you do have these frequencies being set off. Oklahoma. This is I'm seeing radar like I've never seen it before. This is the 16th. The 16th at 12.20 a.m. Now look at these frequencies. Oklahoma, Kansas. 65 earthquakes. Well, Oklahoma and Kansas, raging. Got hit with an awful lot of very powerful frequencies. This is the 17th at 4.02 a.m. Is it surprising you had earthquakes? No. Is it normal? No. 17th at 11 p.m. Look at this. I mean, these frequencies, man, have... that they're... We are at war. They are using different weapons. These are, yeah, the non-lethal weapons. The unconventional, unconventional weapons. You know, and very few areas now of our country are left alone. 
but look at what is taking place in uh, Nebraska in all of these areas. It's almost as if you know, we're looking at these pulsating frequencies are are they do they have different frequencies pulsing at different times? I'm not sure. But look at um, look at Mississippi. Look, this affects all life, okay? But whatever's happening here in Kansas, it's like, okay, I'm not quite sure, but powerful frequencies are involved. The 18th at 2.39 a.m. The pi cutouts, you know, the, the, the very defined lines, those are the extremely low frequencies that can cause earthquakes. And this is uh, yesterday at uh, 4.09 p.m. And Kansas, well, this is an unusual uh, emission of extremely low frequencies, something that I've never seen before, where you can actually see them twirling around and pulsing at the same time. No, it is not a surprise whatsoever. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I will link below to this document, or this article, and it lists, it, it's the, um, and now for the weather, compliments of extremely low frequencies. The waves goes through history. Tesla discovered thousands of uses for electricity. At 10 hertz of extremely low frequency beams bounce through the earth and up into the ionosphere would start electron resonance 50 kilometers above the earth. This would affect thunderstorms by causing a dielectric breakdown above the clouds and forcing them to release their energy and water in non-natural ways. 1976, Soviets turned on their Tesla magnifying transmitters with a primary extremely low frequency of 10 hertz, started weather modification experiments. Uh, these were monitored by the U.S. National Security uh, Agency, which listens to all radio frequency that originate from Russia. Uh, New York Times, 1976, described the Great Earthquake, which destroyed uh, Tangshan, not sure if I pronounced that correctly, China, killed 650,000 people just before the first tremor, tremor, sorry I'm tired, and yes, yes, I, I'm a New Yorker, and the ER becomes an A when I'm really tired. Um, the first tremor. At 3.42 a.m., the sky lit up like daylight. The multi-hued lights, mainly red and white, were seen up to 200 miles away. Leaves on many trees were burned to a crisp. Growing vegetables were scorched uh, like a fireball hit. These electrical effects are tied to electromagnetic plasma. Ha! Huh. And we got a lot of electromagnetic plasma happening. Uh, ball, plasma and ball lightning, which result from Tesla style and harp like transmitters. 1977, July 4th, one year after the start of the Russian experiments, the U.S. government conducted extremely low frequency experiments that created an enormous downburst of rain in six counties of northern Wisconsin. Winds of up to 157 miles per hour devastated a wide area and the extremely low frequency generated storm destroyed Phillips, Wisconsin, destroyed 350,000 acres of forest, caused $50 million worth in da uh, damages. Planetary Association for Clean Energy PACE newsletter described the storm. Downburst activity has been described as occurring 
when the top of a thunderstorm cloud topples over, bringing with it masses of wind straight down. The U.S. government's transmitter sent about 1.2 million watts of energy into the ground. The ground connections are at each end of the antenna and up to the other end, forming an antenna loop. Signals are sent by shifting the frequency. The antenna began transmissions at 1300 hours by shifting from 76 hertz to 72 or 80 pulsed at a rate of 16 times a second. That's what we're living. Uh, October 1977, United Nations investigates the possibility of weather modification and agrees to ban its utilization. Yes, the United States conducting weather modification operations in Vietnam. Then we had congressional hearings. Senator Pell asking our the heads of our military you're not doing any crazy stuff like uh, melting the ice in Greenland are you oh no sir and none of that crazy stuff like uh, creating you know earthquakes and oh no sir and that was it November 1977, U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency declassifies a report describing how vast advances in Soviet psychotronic technology can create the ultimate Big Brother society by using electronic mind control against populations to implement ideas and thoughts into the heads of unsuspecting victims using extremely low frequency transmissions like you're seeing here right here and that we see all over our country operating okay uh, let's see what else January 1978 specula magazine described the Russian extremely low frequency effects and electromagnetic signal of certain frequencies can be transmitted through the earth which depending upon the frequency used, focusing, wave shape, etc., one can induce a variety of effects such as earthquakes induced at a distant aiming point, several disturbances in the middle and upper atmosphere over the target area, and anomalous weather effects. This is called the Tesla effect. January 1978, Russia issued a detailed research paper titled Global Magnetic Warfare, a layman's view of certain artificially induced unusual effects on the planet during 1976 and 1977, describing early Soviet work with Tesla's method of controlled earthquakes. January 30, 1981, Washington Post. The world sustained 71 significant earthquakes during 1980. Uh, from 56 the previous year and the world death toll climbed to 7,140 five times the 1979 figure the US Geological Survey said coincidentally with the increase in Soviet and US extremely low frequency transmissions during 1980 there was a sharp increase in earthquakes around the world that's when mainstream media actually was, you know, it was still pretty much the fourth branch of the federal government, speaking truth to power, you know, doing that investigative journalist, journalism that brought about this kind of information. Do you see any of this information, mainstream media reporting? Oh, every now and then. This is what's going on. This is what's creating those not normal 65 earthquakes in Kansas and Oklahoma. June 1981, Pace Newsletter reported that Dr. Ralph Markson of, the, of MIT uh, suggests that if an atmospheric variations uh, do affect the weather, the appropriate use of extremely low frequency 
and very low frequency radio waves might do the same trick. Ah, yeah, it is known the very low frequency radio waves, such as those induced by lightning, can destabilize plasma in the magnetosphere. August 9, 1983, Washington Post again reports that this guy, you know, retired Lieutenant Colonel Tom Bearden, scalar technology is being used to control our weather. Washington Post, Lieutenant, before he retired, Thomas Bearden, nuclear engineer and leading U.S. Tesla researcher, lectured to the U.S. Psychotronics Association, explaining how the Tesla wave generation, uh, generators worked. This is what he said. The U.S. had been working with extremely low frequency generators, but found that the foundation of ground wave emergency network, Gwen Towers. Gwen Towers. Let's see what a Gwen Tower looks like. Ah, uh, well, I got, hang on. Here you go. We have military transmitter sites, Cutler, Maine, uh, Wisconsin, Colorado, Montana, um, Missouri, Iowa, and another state, and I can't remember. That's a Gwen Tower, different from a cell tower that emit microwave frequencies, also emitting frequencies that help control the weather. These babies right here, the Gwen Tower, ground wave emergency network. Ah, that was the our, our responders, the first responders. Transmission, you know, the especially for communication, should we get uh, an attack with nuclear bombs? This was decommissioned in the 70s. So why do we see the proliferation? These towers now are ubiquitous. They're all over, all over our country. They line interstates, but they're also, well, drive around your community. Very tall towers with copper wires coming down to the ground. They can emit extremely low frequencies through the ground or into the atmosphere. So, uh, Gwen transmissions, much more effective than standard uh, extremely low frequency transmitters. The Gwen towers were more effective. That's why now we see them all over the place. New York Times in 1987 reported Colonel Paul Hansen, Gwen program director for the Air Force, said the Gwen Towers would not help wage a nuclear war because they would be destroyed in any protracted confrontation, but yet they were building more and more. New York Times reports 1988, Gwen unit utilizes 2,000 watts of power and relaying brief te test messages every 20 minutes. 1988, Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists report, Gwen involves a network of 299 foot high towers using low frequency radio waves. 1989, Washington Post also reports uh, World Bank President Barbara Knavel, um, I don't know, made a speech in Tokyo at a conference, Global Environment, in which he revealed long range goals of the international bankers uh, he said, while higher temperatures may cause a number of disasters, they might also warm cold and unproductive lands in the north into productivity. This candid admission described the real reason that the Soviets and the New World Order bankers have secretly promoted continuous weather engineering over the northern hemisphere since the early 1970s. That's coming from your Washington Post. Gwen units directly here. Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist, 1989. Again, uh, Gwen Tower locations. 
of extreme importance were Gwen units directly in the middle of the high rainfall area of the 1999 or 1993 flood in the upper Mississippi Valley. Gwen units, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Missouri, Colorado, Montana. The range could influence the magnetic fields in neighboring states. The resulting enhanced constant precipitation levels killed hundreds and destroyed billions of dollars of property. 1990, because of the publicity of the weather engineering aspects of the Eastland Arco patent, weather modification, uh, Eastland was you know, the number one guy in the HARP creation, the HARP facility in uh, Alaska. Uh, well, too much prior to 1980, Washington Post, New York Times, whoa, you're reporting on stuff that now, well, we're about to build HARP. That's it. You're done. U.S. government suppressed all further news about the inventions, weather engineering, HARP, and all of the technology. 1990 Progressive Magazine reported that each Gwen Tower would have 100 copper wires, each 330, <laughs> 33, uh, 330 feet long, fanning out in a perfect 360, all of these frequencies set off by the Gwent Tower can, they can go off 360. Uh, they can be used to, well, depending on the power and the frequency, kill every life form within a 40 mile radius. Yeah. Uh, you can continue reading. But, you know, You got all the evidence, but people don't care about evidence anymore. You know, it's interesting, these news reports today, 12.28 p.m., Cincinnati, the forecast, winds, hail, lightning, possible severe survive. storms coming your way, Cincinnati, they're probably going on right now. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, what was reported? Let's see. They said, strong damaging winds and hail are possible, but less likely. 20 minutes later, I see this. Damaging wind and hail will be primary concerns in any severe storm that develops in Cincinnati. So it went from less likely to primary concern in 20 minutes because meteorologists are they're simply a joke and they cannot forecast accurately anymore not when man is controlling weather. Not when artificial intelligence and nanotechnology has usurped Mother Nature's function. And yeah, the weather events continue. Louisville, Kentucky, isolated in nature. Huh. We get these isolated in nature storms that wreak havoc in communities all over. But that is highly unusual complex of storms developing in Iowa, heads into the Ohio River Valley. Now, Iowa, last night, now we see semis flipped all over because they can create damaging winds. Oh, those downbursts. Well, they can create it all. South Carolina, Yesterday, power outages, storm damage, upstate, the wind was pretty intense, but not here in Anderson. Clemson, Clemson got hit. Their SO club, uh, well, th th this just goes on and on. You know, I was standing talking to a neighbor about the weather. They were saying, you know, all we hear now is thunder. 
and it just goes on and on and on for like six hours. You see the lightning, you see the thunder. We got very, very little rain here in Anderson. Then another neighbor stepped out of his apartment. He said they're having major storms in Greenville. He's talking to his friend. I, I said, what's going on? Oh, the thunder is intense and lightning. I said, well, w high winds? Gets back on the phone, talks to his friend, no. Any rain? Gets back on the phone. Then he says, no, no rain. No winds, but thunder. Now, a couple of nights ago, or last week sometime, I heard thunder that scared the crap out of me. Scared the crap out of the cats because, wow, I've never seen them run inside so quickly. But it wasn't thunder. Three explosions. One right after the other. Explosions in the sky. Never heard anything like it, but scalar technology can create it. Uh, yeah, more trees toppling over all over the place. I'll link below to everything. You can check it out. It's just, look, willful ignorance of your fellow uh, citizens in your respective countries allow this to persist. They allow it to persist. And we have been, whoa, man, ignorant for, well, you know, you got to do the work to step out of that ignorance. You got to care. And this is just going to continue. I hate seeing it. It happens every single day. More, more, and more every single day of your fellow Americans having to deal with something coming from somewhere and a whole lot of Americans they no longer have the finances to handle the something coming from somewhere